Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you how you can save data to your Firebase Firestore database. So we will have a very simple UI layout here where you can enter your first and last name and also your age and simply save that to your database. So when I enter something here and then click on save to database, make sure to take a look at my database here in the background. Then you see the new data is saved into that database. So this is what I will show you in this video. Make sure to already set up your UI layout as I did here. And you can of course get that from my GitHub repository. Link is in the description. And I also assume that you set up your Firebase correctly so that you connected your project to Firebase. And under the Firestore tab in the Firebase Assistant that you set up your Firestore dependencies and also that you added the coroutine dependencies here, those two for coroutines in general and that one for coroutines for Firebase. And you can see here is my Firestore dependency. I actually want to extend that a little bit. Since we are using Kotlin, we can use the KTX dependency here, which just comes with some additional functionality for Kotlin and is just optimized for Kotlin. So you should choose this one, click on sync now, and then jump into main activity. So first of all, what is really important to know about Firestore is that it saves its data in collections of documents. So we will always start with a collection and that collection will contain different documents. In our, con in our example, one document represents a single person that we save in our database. So every time you want to save some of these documents, which is in our case, our person, then you need a reference to the collection that document should be stored in. And we will do this above here, which will be, not well, late in the var, it will be the private val person collection reference, person collection ref, and we will set that to firebase.firestore. And if you don't have that firestore here, then you really need to make sure that you have that KTX dependency because that is only included in that KTX dependency. And we also need to import Firebase here. And after that, we have that collection function. So we can refer to a particular collection. And here we need to pass the name of that collection. And it's really not bad if that collection doesn't exist yet. If we add some data to it, then it will be automatically created. So I will call this collection persons. And because we want to save persons into that collection, we also need to define how a person looks like. And for that, we need to create a data class. So let's create a new class, new Kotlin follow class, select class here, and I will call it person. That will be a data class, as I said. We don't need those curly brackets. Just in the constructor, we just define how a person looks like. A person has a first name, which is a string, it has a last name, which is also a string, and it has an age, which is an integer. And that is everything we want to save for our person. Then we can go back to main activity. And here I will create a private function to save a person. That function will take the person as a parameter that we want to save, and it will start a coroutine in the IO dispatcher so coroutine scope dispatches.io.launch and in here we will have a try and catch block. So we will wrap the data uploading process around a try and catch block. So in case something goes wrong, we will be notified in the catch block. So in case we catch an exception, we want to switch the coroutine context because we want to show a toast and that is only possible in the main dispatcher. So with context dispatches.main here we will show a toast, toast.make text, this admin activity, and simply print the error message, make it a short toast, or actually make it a long toast, and call it show afterwards. And to actually upload the person data, that is very easy to do. We just need to call our person collection reference that we created above here. So we just determine where we want to save that person now. and we simply want to add that person to the person collection reference. So we call the add function. And you can see we could put any kind of data in here. In our case, that is our person. 
And since we are inside of a coroutine, we can call that await afterwards. So this code will only continue after that line if we successfully added that person to our database, or at least if that uploading process is finished. If it throws an exception, then the code will jump to this, of course. And after here, we can copy that with context block and show a toast again. And that toast will instead say successfully saved data. And then we only need to call that function when we click on that button to save it or to upload it. So button upload data dot set on click listener. Here I will get the first name from our edit text first name dot text dot to string. We will have the last name from et last name dot text dot to string. And we will have the age from et age dot text dot to string dot to int. And with that data, we can now create our person. So our person is a new person and simply pass all that data here. And then simply call our save person function with that person. So that is everything for our code, but to actually be able to save that data in our database, we also need to set up the database in our Firebase console. So let's switch to that, go to database, then this window will open and we click on create database here. Then we will start this in test mode, which is as the name says for testing. So you should of course never choose this testing mode in production because for that you have that production mode. But for our tutorial series, this is fine. This will just make it very easy for you to upload data and read data from your database. And in a later video of this series, I will also talk about the security rules of Firestore so that you can actually secure your database and only particular users are allowed to read and write from it. So let's click on next, make sure to have that test mode selected. Then you have to choose a cloud Firestore location, which should ideally be at the place where most of your apps users are because then there's the least delay. So in my case, I will just choose Europe rest here. You choose your country or wherever your users are and then click on done. And after the loading is finished, you can see here is your finished empty database for Cloud Firestore. So let's actually go into Android Studio, run our app and see if everything is working. So take a look in our Firebase console and open our emulator here. I will put in some data here in our edit texts. And when I now click save to database, you can see successfully saved data, but we don't see any data in here. And that can happen, especially if that is the first kind of data that is in your database. In that case, you just need to reload the page once. And after that, you should see your data. As you can see, here is my person, age 22 Android devs. And that is also a little bit buggy here. If we click on our main reference, then we see the collection reference, the first document, which has a unique ID that was generated by Firestore. So that is just to make sure that each document inside of that collection has a unique ID. So I hope you understood everything and it got clear to you how you can save data to your Firestore database. If so, please let me know in the comments in the next videos. I will also show you how we can retrieve that data again, how we can delete it, how we can update it and so on. There's a lot of stuff I can show you for Firestore. So that's it. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.